I think I need to talk about Manic Monday, and I think I'm starting to see Manic Monday and Raspberry Beret as being bookend songs or twin songs. I didn't know that both were written by Prince. I know that when I was um, listening to, or didn't remember anyway, as I was listening to Raspberry Beret, it made me think of Manic Monday, and then I went to look at Manic Monday. Here's what I think. I think that Prince um, was doing, yeah, twin songs. And so the song Raspberry Beret is from the standpoint, the viewpoint of someone like Michael. I think the song Manic Monday might be from the standpoint or viewpoint of someone like Michelle. It also might be the standpoint or viewpoint of just an average working person who is involved in this kind of on the side which I think is what Michelle basically has been doing. Um, I don't know, though. I don't know enough about what Michelle's done over the years. I know that she was working for border security or something at some point. The lyrics, Manic Monday. Six, the number of the lovers. The dream, because I have programmed dreams and Based on the way dreams are used in music lyrics, I think that these program dreams have been around at least since the early 1960s. I was kissing Valentino, so there's that word Valentine, like David Bowie's Valentine's Day. But it's Valentino, an Italian. He's Italian. So she's kissing Valentino, an Italian actor. Okay. Mike Payne is Italian. Um, so I think that's the link. I think that's a, a link between Mike Payne, this song, and um, Bowie's song, Valentine's Day. By a crystal blue Italian stream. Now, isn't that interesting? Because crystal blue um, because that Breaking Bad keeps coming back to me with all of this. I have a sense that there is, I'm not going to say that, I'll, I'll say that for another time, but that, you know, blue, what did they call it? Blue sky, the meth that he was making. There's a reason why that meth was blue and it's not just chemical. You know, there's a, there's a symbolic reason why it was blue or a coded reason. And Mike Payne is definitely connected with the color blue. So we've got blue and Italian together, and we've got what? We've got crystal. Another suggestion that Mike Payne, you know, I mean, yes, it's a link after a link after a link, but there's a lot of these links. Might have been, you know, linked to drugs, specifically methamphetamine. Maybe now is the time to mention that Michelle DiCostanzo is the first person that ever offered me methamphetamine when I was 15 years old. Um, I don't, don't consider Michelle DiCostanzo to be, you know, bad influence or drug pusher or anything like that, but she did offer me meth when I was 15, uh, and she was 16. So, and people, I don't think, offered me drugs unless there was an outside force behind it, you know, I, I, I don't think she would have done that unless she felt like she was either being permitted to or encouraged to. Okay, so these are the days when you wish your bed was already made. So this idea of sleeping, which is basically lying and pretending that you're not involved in the stuff that you're involved with. Um, and manic. And I was looking in my journals because I feel like there was a journal entry from before 1985 where I talk about I feel like a real artist because I feel manic. You know, because I used to read <laughs> about artists who were manic depressive, so I thought it was something exotic, okay? I would never write that now, knowing what I know now, how my journals have been used in the kind of way that those kinds of words are used, twisted and used against a person. But the, the whole thing was, the whole thing is this was planned from way back. You can go back into lyrics and see the way the w words, certain words are used like crazy, perhaps, you know, a Madonna song called Borderline and all these other stuff that this whole craziness is all worked into, it's part of the system just like the drugs are, okay? This was planned out way before we were born, that they were going to, 
you know, to try to turn us into drug addicts. They were going to try to turn us into prostitutes. They were going to try to say that we were crazy, have us locked up in mental institutions. All of this stuff was planned out. It was planned. The fact that we survived so far this kind of stuff is amazing. Why are they making it, putting us through more? I have just unbelievable because they'll do it until they they're forced to stop. That's the truth. They will do it until they're forced to stop. Anyhow, anyhow, that was their little clue about, you know, it wasn't just me playing around with the idea of being manic. It's them waiting for that moment when they're going to actually try to, you know, say that I'm, you know, a danger to myself and others and all of this stuff. And this was all this, <sighs> You know, any kind of issues that I did have were created. You know, they create anorexia in people. They create suicidal behavior in people. They create depression in people. They create all this stuff. They create Alzheimer's. This is all mind control done with frequency-based weapons. It's not really mind control. It's full body control. Um, I don't know how much, you know, I don't know what specific diseases they can mimic, if they can mimic all diseases or, you know, but they sure can mimic or create lots of them. Um, you know, and it doesn't matter whether you actually have the flu. If you're violently throwing up, you're sick. So I guess it really doesn't matter if it's a mimicked disease or a real disease, you know, as long as, you know, um, as long as you're suffering from it. Uh, if I had an aeroplane, I still couldn't make it on time. Um, one of my most common dream themes is our airplane dreams. And most of them are just completely ridiculous. And it's really about getting nowhere. Uh, I do think I should start mentioning those a little bit because they're linked with Disneyland. I don't know if I should talk about Disney or not. I don't know if Disney's out there trying to help me or hurt me or in between. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure how much it matters if I talk about Disney. Um, but you know, the long story short is that I, um, was taken to Disneyland as a child and it seems this trip to Disneyland is connected with different traumas, like small traumas, nothing big, you know, nothing, nothing severe, but enough trauma that I really remember the trip. And I remember the traumas that I experienced in the trip. So I think, you know, trauma can either make you forget, depending on how much you experience and how big the traumas are. Um, or they can help you remember. And I would say in this case, the trauma that I experienced around Disney was a remembering thing. But it included a very strange ride at Disneyland that just, I racked my mind about over, and it was an airplane ride. And it was a traumatic ride. And I racked my brain over that going, did this ride really exist? I mean, I knew it did, but was it really at Disneyland? I have never found any evidence that this ride was at Disneyland. And then I watched this movie called Plane Crazy. It turns out it's the earliest, I think, um, Mickey Mouse movie, but it came out after Steamboat Willie. And the exact airplanes in Plane Crazy were the types of airplanes that we were sitting in on that ride. So I know it was at Disneyland. So, wow. Um, really interesting. Uh, that would have been about 1977. Anyhow, so this airplane link happens again and again and again with me. And um, early in my life, I liked airplanes. Later on, I found that I was more and more afraid of flying. I wonder now, in retrospect, if some of it might have been all these crazy dreams that I had about airplanes. In this song, um, this sort of bridge area talks about that I have to feed both of us, employments down. And this is interesting because this came out in 1985. When I came back to Humboldt County in late 85, was it? No, it was early 86. It was like... It was like January of 86, December of 85. So I came back to Humboldt County, and then I, you know, I was with Mike for a while, and then we were, I was trying to work. I could not get a job. I could not get a job, couldn't get a job, couldn't get a, I mean, I, I did get some jobs, but I couldn't. Um, so that is a pattern. It wasn't my fault, really. It was just a pattern that I've experienced my whole life in which um, I can't get stable employment. It's just, I, you know. It's not something I'm permitted, I've been permitted to have. I've not been permitted to climb up 
beyond a certain point in any type of job. And it's just like Chris and his music career. Um, sabotaged again and 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 again. In my case, for about, you know, 35 years. Okay, that's a long time. And in his case, even longer. Closer to 50 years of being sabotaged in employment. Um, but yet she's saying we have to feed both of us because, well, guess what? We're being trafficked. So although we're not allowed to actually work or have any success, we physically, you know, are being exploited and other people are making money hand over fist because of the way this is set up. And people joke about it like you're selling nothing. You're just selling pictures. You're selling inspiration for artists. You're selling, you know, but, you know, Disneyland, what's Disneyland selling? Disneyland is selling rides. Disneyland is selling an experience. I mean, they sell other things now, by obviously, because they are permitted to succeed and they are permitted to climb up. But, I mean, it doesn't matter that all you're selling is pictures that you've stolen from our lives, our stolen moments, our privacy, everything, our medical records, our physical bodies by implanting us, you know, and all that stuff because we're also being medically trafficked. Um not being paid, not only not being paid, but not even allowed to have success. So I think part of this sort of supposed design of not allowing us to have success is that is what's going to help us recognize the problem to begin with, right? So we recognize the problem. I recognize the problem anyway. I certainly recognize the problem. That should have been enough. But of course, people are not going to give this kind of thing up unless they are forced to do it. So somebody has to make them do it. And so there's, you know, different ways we can encourage people to find a better solution. But meanwhile, that's not good enough. You also have to make it too difficult to continue the same way that you've been going on. Um, and uh, so in, the cost needs to go way up for this to continue. Uh, and it should have gone way up the moment I said stop. Regarding the video itself, okay, here's a clock. The clock appears, the clock's at 8.0, that's oh, actually different times, isn't it? One's at 8.03, maybe 8.02, maybe 8.05. Um, the clock looks like the shell, the shape of the shell on the shell station, doesn't it? I think that's deliberate. So there's a little nod to Raspberry Beret right there. She's got a raspberry colored, or, you know, I can't tell because of the lighting, but it's a, you know, a red colored beret. Yes, it's raspberry colored. I want to point out these earrings here. This is like, um, Mike at that time was working for this company called Tomas, where um, they sold earrings from Thailand, mostly. Uh, it's that he, This is a similar to a type of earring that, he sold at that time that I wore, that he had in the 80s. People were into wearing mismatched earrings and having extra piercings in their ears and stuff. So she's got miss, she's got on her left ear, she has just a ring, like the ring in my back. And then on her right ear, she has an earring, like um, a similar style to the earring that Mike sold. Um, you know, and another thing I didn't mention about Raspberry Beret is there is, throughout that, I noticed that there's finger symbols uh, like belly dancers might use. That's what I associate them with. Uh, Mike took me out on our first date to a place called Menorah Thai, which was a Thai restaurant in Eureka that was known for having belly dancers. I don't know why a Thai restaurant had belly dancers. I don't know if that's like, it just doesn't quite seem to make sense to me, but it did. That was kind of their gimmick was that they had belly dancers. Um, so I just think that's more evidence that it relates to Mike, that they had belly dance um, type instrumentation with the finger symbols in it. And then the end of this video is interesting. This um, sounds like this album came out on January 27th, 1986. Uh, so there's this theme of this calendar. Time passing is one of the themes of this music video and the song. But the calendar goes from December 30th, 1985 to January 2nd, 
6, 1986. Kind of interesting. Um, so n there must be numerology in there. Let me think what that might mean. So I think January 6th, you know, 6 is the number of the lovers, and so that it starts out 6 o'clock, right? But um, had Mike already given me the lover's pendant at that time? I don't know if he had. But anyway, um, 1-6-1986. So it could also mean 1 and 6 together, like 16 being the tower. And then along with that... 86, which comes out, you know, 86, 8 is vision and strength, and 6 is the lovers. So the tower and then 86, meaning um, basically um, they're saying, you know, um, and 86 together adds up to 14, which is temperance, which is, you know, holding yourself back and things like that. So 16, you know, together with holding yourself back, so 86. So it's basically just saying, you know, stop allowing yourself to be restrained by the system, come forward, you know, and um, break it down. I think that's why they did that.